thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, not only to come out here to beautiful Germany, uh, to ExoCAD Insights, but just to get out of the house. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful being able to be around my wife for the past six months, but it's also really wonderful to be able to travel a little bit. I just kind of miss her. It's always more wonderful traveling with her as well, that's for sure. So today's presentation is really all about thinking about the clinical side of practice, and especially what a dentist or a combined dental office and laboratory can do. Again, it was a very kind introduction, so I don't need to cover all of this information, but I practice in a very small town in California, and no, I'm not near the ocean, no, I don't treat Hollywood stars. I'm in the middle of the forest, you know, of California. So we have patients that travel to us from three, four, five hours away in California that come to me because of the digital services that we offer. Beyond just intraoral scanning and digital impressions, but same-day restorations, same-day dentures, same-day implant work. And that's a part of what we're going to cover here today. Because, like I said, my clinical practice is really all revolved around digital dentistry. And it's really all about the combination of the digital and analog workflow. And it was really inspiring to see that also with Dr. Uli's presentation as well about combining the digital and analog, because I'm a firm believer in that as well. Because necessity is the mother of invention, but it's also the mother of development, innovation, and excitement. Because if dental practice becomes boring, the best thing you can do is start playing with a computer. All right, now that's from a computer nerd speaking to other computer nerds, right? So we're all friends here. But what happens is, this is how did I get started, a dentist? And it pains me to show this slide, because some people, especially in digital dentistry, are like, no, don't use the free software. No, use free software. That's how I got started. But you know what happened was, this is that I started to say, you know what, I'm just a really cheap dentist, okay? I don't want to spend the money. And then I realized very quickly the limitations of doing that workflow. Because yes, I could download Mesh Mixer. Yes, I could go ahead and download MeshLab, Blender, NetFab, SketchUp, wonderful softwares that you can go ahead and start doing digital dentistry. However, what is your time really worth as a dentist? What is the applications that you want to do? Because I became frustrated with these softwares, the limitations that existed. And I said, you know what? How did I go ahead and get started by really implementing digital software, especially ExoCAD? You know, I was able to do wax ups and things with whatever software. However, I started to realize that I needed to do clinical procedures that actually make sense. Things need to fit, it's no longer playtime. Let's get serious now. Spend the money, and I bought ExoCAD. Why? Occlusal guards. That's the main reason why I bought ExoCAD at first. And literally, almost every single day in my clinical practice, I'm still making occlusal bite guards or bite splints. And for the cost difference of sending an impression to the laboratory of $150 to $200, I can make it in my office for six to eight dollars. And that's about the money. It's not about the money, everybody. It's about being able to look at that patient in the eyes and say, I can give you that guard, time me. An hour, hour and a half. If the patient travels from far, I need to have that solution because that necessity was the mother of me going towards ExoCAD. So now, that's a little bit of the backstory. What can a dentist do with ExoCAD? It's really all about focusing here. What do you want to make with ExoCAD? What do you want to create? We as dentists, we're used to creating things. We create smiles. We create teeth. We create personality. We create a connection with patients. Because that person sitting behind, or that brother, that sister, that mother that's sitting in the chair is also a person. We have to treat them like real people. Because when the patient knows that you're no longer thinking about them like a number, whether it's their chart number or their dollar figure number, we get past that. And we let that connection come together. Because when that patient knows that you genuinely care about them, you'll grow a practice like that. And that's been the truth for me over and over again. But you know what? 
Let's get down to brass tacks. What can a dentist really do? What do you want to make? Start smart. Establish a goal. What do you want in your clinical practice? Figure out, do I have the space? Do I need to build space? Do I really want to be serious about this? Do I just want to buy a package, Happy Meal, of a system? Or do I want to go ahead and build my own? For me, it was all about trying to go ahead and reach that illustrious full arch solution. Well, I was frustrated. You know, in the States, it's becoming tougher and tougher and tougher for dentists because it's becoming harder and harder to find laboratory technicians because for some reason, it's just a lot of them are just saying, you know what, I want a different career, which is a shame because you can do very well as a laboratory technician wherever you are in the world if you really believe in it. What happens is, is, is that we all of a sudden get to the point in our practices where we say, gosh, you know, I have a goal of what I wanted to do in my clinical practice. Eventually, I want to get here. Eventually. Now, I've always been the type of person, like, down in the keys, you know, so I'm just going to test the water out a little bit, just make sure before I get in. And then I'll cannonball in or something, you know, once we go ahead and, you know, feel the water a little bit. But I'm not the type of person that jumps in the deep end right away. So what do we want to make? Let's be slow and progressive about this, because for me, it was making occlusal guards, models, surgical guides, kind of that low-hanging fruit. Now, if you're talking about let's create things, let's make things, we have 3D printing. We can go ahead and 3D print casts or models, surgical guides, try-ins, dentures, occlusal guards, or we can mill it. We have to be able to produce it somehow. Currently, it's those two major production methods, 3D printing, additive manufacturing, or subtractive manufacturing, which is milling. Milling, crowns, dentures, occlusal guards, polymers, and titanium. I started out with milling in my practice because I wanted to make monolithic zirconia restorations. That was my goal. It wasn't that long ago that I did this because, I don't know, you know, five, six, seven years ago, monolithic zirconia was okay. It was not something where I could go, yep, I absolutely feel great about cementing this. But then all of a sudden, it started to really start looking good. And no, I didn't want to cast things as much as I love casting. That sort of technique is fun. But is it something that I could use a computer with? Because you know what? I grew up in a generation where you give me a, a, a canvas, and you ask me to draw somebody's face, and it's going to look like a stick figure. Terrible. Like, horrible. But give me a mouse, and I can draft the Mona Lisa. Maybe not that good, okay? but I can get close. So what happens is, is, is that we as dentists recognize that computers can really help us, and we can really start to utilize some of those computer technologies to take up the slack or to help out a little bit. If computers are kind of scary to you, find ways to collaborate. For dentists, especially in the States, it's really wonderful to integrate dental assistants. And this is my dental assistant here. She made and designed her own crowns in ExoCAD and then milled them herself. Absolutely. If you're a dentist in the States, this is a wonderful way to begin with digital dentistry by getting your assistants on board because it's exciting. You know what can get kind of boring? <laughs> all day, every day. But when you're doing something like this, they're all of a sudden the eyes start sparkling and the excitement level goes up and they're thrilled to come into work on any random day. Maybe you're ready to go ahead and jump up, hire a dental technician. That's what I did. It took me six years to find a dental technician to come to my office. I don't know why. I pay him a lot of money and he's a great guy. And he's a classically removable trained technician. And it's harder and harder. But it's a blessing to be able to have a dental technician in my office. A blessing. So what happens is, is, is that maybe you also want to look at this stuff and have some fun. Because working together is fun. I have the blessing of being married to an incredibly talented, beautiful orthodontist. And here she is showing that she does ExoCAD when she takes her cases from start to finish, she uses the alignment algorithms. She's like, look, I moved those teeth. And you can see this with a color map. Incredible. Small, little tiny steps. She's not going to be designing crowns. She didn't grow up with computers as much as I did. 
because, I don't know, maybe it's Christmas Day and there was a special coupon at Amazon for a new hard drive. I'm like, man, Christmas Day, let's go install a new hard drive. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, no. Yeah, that was, that's a true story, by the way. So, how do we really start smart as dentists? Two popular pathways. You focus in on either the chair side solution, which is excellent for a clinician that just wants kind of step one, two, three, boom, there's a tooth. Very similar to contemporary all-in-one purchase packages of other companies. Software, milled, it's been around since the 80s, but ExoCAD has a solution that integrates any mill, really any system, any porcelain oven. You don't have to buy the specific ones the companies tell you what you have to do. Open workflows is everything. Maybe you want to also consider a hybrid setup. Consider like a full laboratory setup. This is the option that I wanted to go towards. I bought a scanner, whatever brand scanner. I plug it into ExoCAD. They sync, no problem. I design the restoration, send it over to the mill, send it over to the printer, effortless. And I kind of give the correlation. You know, there's this fruit company in the state of California. Apple, right? Everybody knows it? Yeah. And if you want to go ahead and sync your calendar, between your phone and your computer, you go slide across, and they all sync together. And that's kind of a chair-side solution. They all just go wizard, step one through three, four, whatever it is, and a crown pops out. Where if you go kind of a hybrid clinical laboratory setup, you kind of have them talking to each other, but sometimes they're in a different room, a different setup. Maybe you have an assistant also working on a case together with you. Both are fantastic options. Starting smart, first evaluate your scanning options. Do you want a desktop scanner, which is lower cost, but less flexibility? Or an intraoral scanner, which is higher cost, but greater flexibility? I don't own a desktop scanner. I personally feel in my clinical office, an intraoral scanner can do everything that a desktop scanner can do. Personal opinion. And I've scanned a lot of models and scan bodies, full arch cases, stone casts and models with an intraoral scanner. Also, dentists, start smart. Don't jump into the deep end unless you really feel confident with that. Be intelligent about this. Single implant crown, single tooth restoration. Pop a scan body on there, remove the healing abutment, pop the scan body on, but just to be on the safe side, make a PVS impression also. It's not as cool. We don't show this on Facebook because people are like, why did you take an impression? And I'm like, why not? Who cares? Take an impression, pour a stone cast, the first few crowns that you do, test out your scan body, make sure this works for you while you're learning this stuff, and then test it on the stone model. There's nothing wrong with making a secondary impression for a few first few number of cases. Do it. Once you've established that you've kind of gone the direction of starting smart, you can then go ahead and start to think about it to yourself. Do I want to manufacture with 3D printing at the hobbyist level, the production level, or milling? And it tends to go up in cost. Hobbyist level, you can buy a 3D printer for 300 US dollars, and I can print temporaries with that. Is it going to integrate as easily as, say, a $10,000 3D printer or a $7,000 3D printer? No. So you have to think about it more, and it takes more time. How much time is it really worth? Then milling, what do you want to make? If you want to make ceramic crowns, Got to have a mill. Yes, I know it. IDS, two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, we saw uh, 3D printers of zirconia. It's on the horizon. But we got to get the job done today, everybody. I got a patient who says they're, well, not in COVID world, but normally the patient's like, Doc, I got a cruise in three days. When can you get me that tooth? All right. That's real world dentistry. Then explore your software configuration options through ExoCAD. As a clinician, Typically, most clinicians are going to really consider a chair-side CAD solution or an implant planning solution. Technicians are going to typically going to go ahead and choose a dental CAD solution, typically. However, I do think that there's some blur that's occurring between this as well. Especially if you're running a hybrid clinical laboratory environment, all of these options work. And you can implement them all in your practice. But as dentists, sometimes it can be intimidating designing cases. There's nothing wrong with scanning and outsourcing. There's technicians and talented technicians from all around the world that will design your cases for you. 
then you get an STL file back and you've got a mill sitting right there, just plugs right in and boom, you've got a tooth restoration because digital design can be a very intimidating part. But once you kind of master the, the, the milling portion, then you're like, I'm going to start playing with the CAD software. Boom, you got it. Maybe consider outsourcing your first few cases. You know, you can send out a crown in California, an STL file, and have it milled for 22 US dollars. 22. Delivered. <laughs> so what happens is, this is that maybe you test yourself out. Maybe you start designing and sending out for STL files if you're not ready to buy a mill just yet. There's lots of different options of what you can do. Don't get boxed into the corner. Think about differing workflows. What works best for you here in Germany or what works best in Arkansas or what works best in South Africa will really depend upon you. Maybe full arches, send out your first few cases. And then when you're ready, buy a full arch mill. Then on that single crown restoration, maybe I outsource it, maybe I insource it, produce it in my office, maybe I do both the first few times that I'm trying this new workflow out. Patient comes in, I've got two crowns. Who cares you spent a little bit of extra money, but you test yourself and you validate yourself. So as we start approaching more complicated dentistry, it makes sense. Be smart about it. So let's take a look at some just general applications because you know what? It's true. I do a lot of these cases that were shown earlier. I'm amazed by the quality of dentistry that is not only in Germany, but the Côte d'Azur and all over the world. I practice very boring dentistry, everybody. Extremely boring. Why? It just pays the bills. Single tooth dentistry. Patient comes in, missing tooth 19, or what is that, 3, 6, right? I got it right? All right, yeah. So, a first molar. So, his patient's missing a first molar. Patient's been to three other dentists, but he heard that I can use digital dentistry. Came to my office, accepted our treatment plan on the spot when he saw my digital technology in the office. Slam dunk. This is your first implant case, everybody. Guided surgery is not about, it's less about guided surgery. It's more about prosthetics. Why do we do surgical guides? It's to make this a slam dunk case like you saw earlier. That bridge popped right in. It's less about surgery. This guy, I, I could do this surgery case blindfolded. There's so much bone. But let's bring it into exoplan. Work up the case. Merge the files from the intraoral scan. Crown down philosophy. Design the restoration and then work backwards from that because that's everything. Guided surgery is about getting the tooth in the right position so it makes our lives easy. And our technicians will shine if you're sending out for technical work or the restoration to be made. Your technician's like, wow, I love that implant. Versus, oh boy, doc, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do here. Because it's much better getting that first phone call. Wow, this is, wow, amazing. So then we design the implant around the restoration. And what I'm blown away by Exoplan is, this is you can see incredible visualization of offsets and diameters. So if you're using other software out there where you have to kind of measure it and reverse engineer it, boom, it's right there. I don't have to think about it. And I love that. The surgical guide pops in. I go to the 3D printer because 3D printing plus surgical guides, mwah, wonderful. So what happens is, this is that we 3D print this thing. We, you know what? I'm the, this, I love showing this picture because I'm like, I'm a digital dental freak. But there's something about paper. So when I saw Dr. Michael uh, doing the surgery area with the paper on the wall, I'm like, yes! I take scotch tape and I stick it on the wall. You know why? It's because the computer monitor never goes a Windows update in the middle of surgery with paper. <laughs> it's true. So, pop the guide in. You're like, oh, well... Implant's done. Patient looks at you and they go, that's it? That's how you build a practice. When the patient looks at you and says, that's it? And I go, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm glad that was a good experience rather than, oh man, I'm never doing that again. Now, if we start thinking about crown down philosophy, how we approach restorations, Let's step it up a little bit in complexity because almost every single day in my practice, I'm doing some sort of pre-op uh, model, bio, copy, whatever you want to call it. Using the patient's restoration as a guide for either their implant or their crown restoration. So here I've got a patient 
What you don't see in the picture is 212, which is 25, right? No, 4, 24. So, first premolar, cracked vertical fracture. Patient comes in, I think it hurts a little bit. I looked at the x ray, x ray looks fine. I don't see anything up there. I think, yep, yeah, this tooth right here. You don't see anything wrong. But then I took the lingual cusp and I go, er, er, oh, you're getting an implant. The patient goes, what? Oh, I figured so. So you know what I can do is, is before I even extract the tooth, I go ahead and I do an intraoral scan, goes into the database. Then the reason for this is, is the patient says, but doctor, if I need an implant there, I have this occlusal guard that I, that he was a lab tech, and he says, I made this bite guard in 1968, and I still need this thing to fit. And look, it's got cast circumferential clasps. Really? I know, and he's relined it. Oh. But you know what? The expectation is him going, well, I know, I'm going to have to probably get a new one. But if we exceed his expectation of saying, I got this, let's make you a restoration that fits underneath this. So we'll start out smart. We'll go ahead, take the patient's case, bring it into a 3D implant planning software, and start working up the implant with Exoplan and start reverse engineering the implant around the patient's restoration. We'll take his existing scan and we'll merge it using alignment functions. Once we have merged the entire scan, we can go ahead and start planning the implant utilizing the patient's original tooth scan as a guide. Even if that lingual cusp were fractured off, I still make that scan because if I at least have the buccal cusp, or if the buccal cusp fractures off, if I at least have the lingual cusp, I've got a reference point. Once you start scanning a lot of your patients, you have a digital database that carries for years and years. Maybe this patient, I've been telling him for years that the tooth is about to break, and all of a sudden he calls me up on a Sunday and said, Doctor, that tooth is finally broken. I say, no problem. I'll go online and download your scans. I'll see you first thing Monday morning and get you a temporary. The patient's like, what? Really? I said, I got this. Wow, that makes sense. That's it? Growing a practice that way. What's incredible about Exoplan also is you can visually see the drills in place. I love this feature. I don't know why I do, but being able to see the drill in there and the offsets to know that the, the drill is going to that proper position makes me feel very good about the surgical plan. Then we design the surgical guide. It's an everyday surgical guide. Everything here is working pretty well. And then we go to make the surgical guide. Implants placed. I don't have any pictures of this particular surgery, but I uh, did a conventional surgery extraction, implant placement, closed up, uncovery, placed the scan body on the day of uncovery. But no problem, I can scan that in. I'll bring it back into ExoCAD. And then we can go ahead and use that patient's original tooth restoration as my guide to be able to backtrack and to say, how am I going to fit your 1968 occlusal guard? It could be a denture. Who knows? A partial. It could be anything. This particular patient just has an occlusal guard from 1968. So what happens is, is that if I can exceed his expectation of him saying, wow, he is going to tell 10 of his friends. And those 10 friends may come in as patients as well. Maybe it's a denture patient. Maybe it's just a single tooth patient or a three unit bridge or a partial. I haven't made a PBS impression for a removable partial denture in five years. Four and a half now, close to five. There's just no reason to. With scanning, and digital design and workflows, we can make this happen. Design the restoration, get close, and then all of a sudden I just go, eh, software, do the hard work for me. Check, done. And then all of a sudden, I can make a restoration that fits within that kind of greenish outline, which is the patient's original tooth. As long as I design his future restoration to fit just a little bit underneath that, I can take the tooth, pop it in, and then that occlusal guard should fit. So then when we go to the final, you can see my implant placement wasn't ideal, but that was planned that way. That's where the bone was. I've really kind of stopped this philosophy of, oh, the implant must be perfect inside of this thing. This thing. No. 
Everything for me now is angled screw channel. Everything! I love it. Because I can look at the bone and just say, you know what? I can angle that 25 degrees. Nah, I got it. And the research shows that, yes, you can still get your torque value. You just might have to go a couple of extra newtons. No big deal. Occlusal guard fits. The patient looks at me and goes, I knew you could do it, doc. I'm like, ah. Oh. I was kind of hoping for the wow. No, he's like, I don't know. I knew you could do it. So let's step it up a little bit in complexity. Maybe not single tooth dentistry. In my part of California, we treat a lot of dentures. A lot of dentures, and I love it. I love dentures. Why? Because of implants. Implants are fantastic, and they make a denture patient really happy. This is an average patient for me in my practice. Average. So, making a PVS impression or even an alginate on a class three mobile, like the patient's walking in, the teeth are doing this. <laughs> and he's a delightful person, so sweet. And he is terrified of the dentist. Why? Because every dentist is like, I think I'm going to take out your teeth with the impression. Yeah. And that freaks out patients. Like, that is not a way to build a practice. I say, well, I'm not going to take out your teeth, but hey, listen, you get it for free. Well, that might, that might be funny. Okay. But patients get terrified at the idea of taking out their teeth with alginates or impressions. You can nail these cases with an intraoral scanner. Is it easy? No. Does it take practice? Absolutely. But it can be done. But what's most important is, is I can take this and work up a complex case with a very challenging occlusion, with very, very difficult aesthetic sort of lines and planes and everything, and jump it into ExoCAD, hack the system a little bit, and just design like a gingiva partial. It's not using the partial module, but it's just using the regular CAD marshal, or the module. And what happens is, is, is I can at least be able to go ahead and get a rough estimate Ideally setting the teeth, then using the virtual articulator just to go, I think that looks about good. You can go ahead and use, you know, smile design module and smile beautiful facial overlay pictures if you like. This particular case, eh, I just guessed. Throw it in there, throw it into a 3D printer, take it, pop it in the mouth, and the patient grabs the mirror and he goes, wow, I can have that? You know... In California, if I let the patient, you know, try it in and walk out the door, go home to see their parents or whatever, the patient's not coming back. <laughs> so I'll say, yeah, you can try it in now, but I need it for some laboratory work. <laughs> Take it back. No, we joke. This patient would have come back. But this patient was so thrilled about this, and he looks at this and he goes, oh my God, this is incredible. Then we take that design and we take that plan and we jump it back into ExoCAD, grab the original case file, all that hard work that I've already done, we don't need to recreate it, pop it open, double check everything, jump it into Plovdiv and now um, uh, Galway, because when Plovdiv came out with the digital denture function, oh, oh, so good. And so what happens is now is, is I can make pockets and individual teeth that I can 3D print the teeth and 3D print the base, then be able to go ahead and collaborate and do the surgical application, throw the dentures in, but wait, there's more. One of my favorite applications of ExoCAD is this right here. Going open. There is this, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful software buttons in all of dentistry, save seen as, because you can literally do anything with it. What's, what's incredible also about digital dentures with ExoCAD is, is, is that sometimes my technician gets nervous. Are the teeth really fitting in the pockets? Are, uh, well, they wiggle in there, not sure if it's really perfect. So what you can do is design the denture, and then I jump it right into Model Creator, and 3D print articulated edentulous models at, the, at that vertical dimension. Then I can also take the monoblock denture, or the monolithic denture from ExoCAD, jump it into the bite splint module and make a little, little position guide. All within the ExoCAD workflow, just thinking creatively. Is it built into the wizard function? Not necessarily. But it's there for you if you're willing to try. 
If you don't want to do it, work with one of these incredible digital technicians that will collaborate with you. Maybe the future is more collaboration in that way. Who knows? Especially in this post-pandemic world. 3D print, 3D print, then it goes to the mill. We can take our disks, pop it into a mill, this, this particular mill. I've got a 10-disc loader in here. I pop it in, start it, and go home. Come back in the next morning, and it's done. Oh. Then my technician comes in, starts his magic, and it just drops right in. He makes me look good. And I, like I said, it's a blessing to be able to have this in my practice. Every day I feel blessed when he's, he's there. And what happens, too, is this is that then, once he pops it into the denture, goes onto the articulator, and it makes me feel like, you know what, it takes away that unknown factor. And I get a lot of questions from dentists all the time. It's like, you know what, I'd love to be able to go ahead and completely eliminate this articulator and that stone. But you know what, there's something about just going, something about that. That will eventually go away. I know it will. But what happens is, is you can take a complicated case like this, and we can go ahead and start leveraging creative uses of the software. Do we have to do this? As a dentist, do you have to do this? Absolutely not. You could say to yourself, listen, I want single tooth dentistry predictable because I want to go home at 5 o'clock every day spend time with my family and my kids. Absolutely do that. Get a chair-side solution, a chair-side mill, and get your dental assistants on board, or get your technician in your office, or learn some digital dentistry. My dental technician is a 35-year bench removable technician, a CDT. He does not know how to use a computer. So I do all the digital design, and I do it between patients. So you know what, my average day, I go, hey, how are you? Boom, we go ahead and start the numbing process. I go over and I check hygiene. Okay, go back to the lab while the patient's getting numb, designing a tooth. There we go. Back on over, grinding on a tooth. Boop, boop, boop. Temporary is being made. I go back to the computer, design, design, design. Yes, plenty of coffee. <laughs> so, yes, it's maybe to inspire a little bit because I truthfully believe any dentist can do this. I genuinely believe that. If you want it, if you truly want this, you can do it. Then we start getting into the little bit more complex. This is the deep end of the pool. Full arch, all on X. Intraoral scanning workflows for all on X is predictable. Maybe more so for the maxillary arch, but the mandibular arch is predictable as well. We can do that if you're thinking creatively by using the interim prosthesis as your pre-op model, then removing that model, cutting it away from your scan, scanning the soft tissue models, and then scan your scan bodies. Everything can be merged together. If you're not comfortable with that, no problem. Scan the patient, interim prosthesis, mandibular dentition, occlusal relationship, and then make a PBS impression. Use your intraoral scanner to scan the stone cast. Use the merge function in ExoCAD and go whoop, and merge the stone cast to the intraoral scan. It's magic. It's not, though. It's just thinking open. When we start thinking open, when we use an open architecture mind, there is no limitation. I've been told many, many times that we don't necessarily need a fully adjustable articulator to do what we do. We need a fully adjustable mind. And that's not to sound elitist or snarky at all. That's just to let everybody know that anything is possible if you want it to be. Thimble-based restorations. Oh, yes. Maybe I'm not ready to start milling titanium in my office, but I've got a dry mill and I can go ahead and mill a polymer. No problem. We can design these thimbles in ExoCAD. I can go ahead and mill individual crowns all in my office, mill the polymer, hand it off to my dental technician to make me shine. Because you know what? It'd come out looking like a stick figure if I started to do it. 
but he's got the skill. Could be a dental assistant as well. But for this type of dentistry, it's really wonderful to be able to work with somebody that knows gingiva, that knows how things should look. And what happens is, this is that when we take cases like this, this is, of course, at the more complex side. There's no question in my mind that this is not for routine workflows. But you know what? I know quite a few dentists in the States, quite a few, that are doing this. They're inspired by a multitude of different factors. And it's not always just about cost savings. It's about being able to know that that patient looks at you and says, doctor, I need this done by Tuesday. Name your price. <laughs> there are some patients like that. It's not very common, but there are some patients like that. And what happens is, is, is that if I can exceed that patient's expectations and say, you know what, <laughs> I got a lot of work to do. Really? You really want it by Tuesday? So I came to you because I know you can do this, okay? Maybe that's how you grow a practice. I don't know. But the most important thing is, is, is that digital dentistry and especially clinical applications of digital dentistry with ExoCAD, milling, 3D printing doesn't need to be complicated. An average clinical week for my office, I'll do something very... This is, 90% of what I do, everybody, single tooth, double tooth dentistry, three unit bridges, partials, dentures. Nobody generates a thousand likes on Facebook. I post something like this on a Facebook group, they're like, oh, okay, that's cool. But what happens is, this is that you can also step it up a little bit. Like this particular patient, as a prosthodontist, I get some patients with these maxillofacial defects. Patient goes in for an all-on-X procedure, and he goes, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I need something that way I don't talk like that. This it really happens. I can go ahead and scan the patient the day of surgery, bring it into ExoCAD, 3D print an occlusal device using the bite splint module, and obturate it that same day. And the patient looks at me and goes, oh my god, this is incredible. Or maybe it's aesthetic dentistry. I don't really do that many veneers. I don't really like it. It's just not my thing. Denture? I'll make you a beautiful denture. <laughs> but I do get quite a few patients, especially that need anterior or full arch reconstruction. So if I can use the provisional module and then guide my talented technicians, especially the ones that I use for my aesthetic work because we don't do this type of dentistry in my office, if I can go ahead, in this particular case, I literally delivered a 3D printed provisional restoration that I've tried and adjusted in the mouth on a model to my talented ceramist that said, please, this is your reference, this is your prototype, do your magic. That's how we really, really grow in dentistry. And in dental practice, it's really all about being able to collaborate together. Because there are some people who say, sure, uh, he doesn't like technician. No, that couldn't be, f that's the furthest thing from the truth. Furthest thing from the truth. I love dental technicians. What happens is, is, is that when dentists know how to do some of this, we can really collaborate better. I genuinely believe that. It doesn't need to be everything. You don't need to do all of this stuff. It's all about knowing how to take those buttons, leverage them in a way that really improves that person's life sitting in your chair. And then we ask ourselves, what can a dentist do with ExoCAD? I ask you, what can a dentist, or what can't a dentist do with ExoCAD? Thank you.